Well, what did you say? Our language difficulties an impediment to trying to negotiate global deals. Melissa Korn is here to join us to talk about exactly what's going on. And Melissa, can we talk? Can we talk? I think we can, but a few people can't. Uh, there seems to be some difficulty. Um, language barriers uh, seem to be a big impediment to trying to strike international deals in, a, in an increasingly global economy. This would seem to be a big problem. It is. Companies are increasingly finding themselves with new international clients or international operational bases. And if they can't talk to one another externally or internally, they're admitting this has become a huge financial problem for them. They're losing out on big deals. Their revenue might be declining as a result. So they need to kind of get over that language barrier. And um, your story breaks down, you know, a couple of the, the you know, the big places where this is a problem. Brazil, mm -hmm. obviously a huge emerging global uh, global growth market. Uh, Seventy-three percent report that there's some some difficulty there. Uh, China as well reports some uh, some difficulty. Perhaps not. You know, not a surprise given the uh, multiplicity mm -hmm. of languages and dialects within uh, within China. Uh, what what steps are being being taken to remediate this problem? So some companies are actually trying to institute English as the official company language, even if they have operations in France or Bulgaria or wherever it might be. And you know, it's nice to try to want everyone to be on the same page, but there are some problems with that. You can see some. Uh, people, you know, losing self-confidence. If you don't speak English and they're telling you you have to do your presentation in English now, you might withdraw and not be as involved in some activities. You might try to break the rules and still talk in whatever your native language is to your coworkers, but not, you know, when someone from outside the firm visits. So it, there are a lot of hurdles, but a lot of companies are trying to institute English. They're also doing more language training sessions, you know, just giving them classes and having managers visit other countries so they can see not just how the, uh, the company works linguistically overseas, but also some of the social cues, some of the nonverbal communication skills that differ based on different cultures. Now, who's the bigger loser in, the, in these sorts of things? Is it American companies that are, that are losing out because their counterparts don't speak English? Uh, is, it, is it Brazilian and Chinese companies that lose out because they don't speak English? Or, you know, net-net, is, uh, is, everybody, is everybody missing the boat? Everybody is, because these days you have a Brazilian company that's trying to do work in the U.S., in Canada, in wherever, and you have a U.S. company trying to do work in all of those places as well. So it's really every, com every country, you know, companies in every country are really struggling with this right now. Got it. Well, Melissa Korn bringing us the, uh, the update on the language barrier. I'm just stunned that in 2012 we're still talking about this.